Hey, and thanks for listening to another episode of the Fat Guy Podcast. I am the Fat Guy. Most people call me Brett Mason, and I appreciate you listening today. Uh, basically, this is just a chronicle, a journey of my um, weight loss and health and fitness goals and aspirations. I've lost uh, over 120 pounds now, and um, I've used various tools to get there, uh, including the latest one, which is by far the one I'll stick with forever, a ketogenic diet, also called keto. That's generally what I get the most questions about these days. A quick reminder, I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving medical advice. I'm simply sharing my stories and my opinions. Uh, If you want to begin a diet or a weight loss program, you need to consult with a doctor. The only caveat to that, I would say if your doctor flips out when you mention the word ketogenic diet, maybe you should find a different doctor, but that's completely up to you. Um, Ways to listen to the show. So I'm doing a one episode a day thing now. I really like it because I get asked so many questions. It allows me to... You know, instead of doing like a weekly show where I try to cover a ton of stuff, I can just cover a different question each day. So if you don't want to miss one, by far I would recommend the Spreaker app, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker. It's free. Download it. Once you download it, search for Fat Guy Podcast, uh, favorite it, follow it. You'll get notifications about new episodes. And not just that, there's thousands and thousands of other podcasts on there. So who knows what kind of new entertainment you'll discover. Of course, if you're a diehard, tried the true Apple podcast uh, app user or, you know, you use an app on uh, your Android phone or whatever, you know, you can find us. We're in the uh, the Apple podcast. Uh, you can find us there easily. Just search for Fat Guy Podcast. So that's up to you. I highly recommend the Spreaker app, though. I'm on all the social media. Fat Guy Podcast is how you find me. That's my username, no matter whether you're looking at Facebook or Instagram, or Snapchat, or Twitter. I highly recommend Snapchat. That's where I post everything I eat. Last night I ate a pizza. People are always asking me, how I eat pizza if you don't eat carbs? Um, well, you're going to get some carbs, but uh, I demonstrated last night on Snapchat how you do it. It's very easy. I bought a large pizza, scraped all the toppings off into a bowl, threw all the bread away and ate it, and it was delicious. You think that the bread adds something to the taste of the pizza, but it doesn't. All the flavor of the pizza is in the toppings. And you're kind of eliminating the part that doesn't really taste good or have any taste at all. So the, f- the flavor actually increases. Anyway, follow me on Snapchat. I highly you Follow me on all social media. But I do highly recommend Snapchat. Fat Guy Podcast is the username, no matter which form of social media you want to follow me on. So people that have been following my weight loss journey for a long time know that I started this journey in 2013, and it's been ups and downs, okay? And when I started in 2013, um, coincidentally, I weighed 407 pounds then, the same as I weighed when I restarted my journey in January of 2016. Um, But I started using a product called Plexus, or the pink drink. A friend of mine turned me on to it. And my mother just gotten diagnosed with cancer. I was so large, uh, I could barely move. Um, you know, we were walking through the halls of UAB, and my mom, who at that time, I remember that trip to UAB, my mom had been fasting <clears throat> because we'd read all this stuff about how to cure cancer or make, you know, help or whatever. And one of them was this diet put out by the Seventh day Adventist Church. That, You basically fasted. I mean, you were getting little bits of vegetable juice and a little bit of fruit juice and some water. But that was pretty much it. So not only did my mom have have cancer, which had been causing her extreme pain and fatigue and all kind of other things for months because she kept trying to get it diagnosed and couldn't. But because of the fasting, I mean, she'd been fasting for months and months. Uh, Well, it wasn't months and months, but it was over a month at that time. And we're walking the halls of UAB, and I'm exhausted, winded, in pain, back, legs, knees, um, feeling like I need to sit down all the time. And my mom's just running rings around me. And I'm like, barring some kind of miracle happening, my mom's, who's walking rings around me now, at some point her health is going to deteriorate a lot, and she's going to need me to take care of her. We're We're all each other has left. And so... 
I began trying to eat a little less or whatever. What wasn't really working. And then this plexus thing came along, this pink drink, right? And a friend of mine, uh, Mandy, was taking it. And she was losing weight. And I laughed at it at first. You know, I scoffed it off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I watched her, and she continued to lose weight. She really liked it. So I decided to try it. And lo and behold, I, I did lose weight. And I've looked back on that time, um, and I've tried to dissect what Plexus did for me. How much of it was this miracle pink drink and how much of it was other things. And uh, So we'll talk a little bit about that. So just to be clear, I'm not going to skirt around the issue. I did lose weight with Plexus and... Um, you know, I don't remember exactly what it was when I stopped, but it was a lot. It was, I don't know, 40 pounds, maybe 45. It was a lot of weight. Um, but they changed the formula. I remember when they changed the formula, which made me mad because I could instantly tell for whatever reason that it didn't work as well. And then I had some issues with the company that I won't get into. And then on top of that, it was really expensive. And so, you know, to stay in the game, you got to be, you want to be sharing with everybody. And look, I sold a lot of Plexus um, and I didn't want to sell Plexus. <clears throat> I remember when I started, I had no desire to sell Plexus, but I did want to share my story because I was so excited. I was losing weight. And so I'd post about it on Facebook and people would ask me about it. And so, <clears throat> you know, the people that sold it to me were like, man, you need to, you know, you need to be an ambassador. You, you know, you're sharing your story with people. You know, it's not. You don't have to sell Plexus. Plexus will sell itself, and all you're doing is sharing your experiences. You might as well be making money. So I did. Signed up as an ambassador, which really became a bit of a headache. I enjoyed it. I can't tell you how many hours I spent talking to people about Plexus, and like I wasn't like most Plexus quote unquote salespeople or <laughs> ambassadors. Like I would spend time talking to people. Uh, I'd give them tips and tricks to help them achieve their goals. I wouldn't just say, "Here's your drink. Drink it." Now, some people did because they never asked or never talked to me. But the ones that talked to me, I told them everything I did. And I had a plan. And and we'll talk about that in a second. But it was so time consuming. I remember one day, uh, you know, I I realized that I had been talking with people on Facebook Messenger or by phone the entire day. Like it became a full-time job. Um. Now, most people don't experience that. I was in a u- unique position in that, um, you know, I was still in radio at that time. And um, I don't mean popular in a vain way, but just a lot of people knew me. And so I had a huge social media following. I still have a huge social media following, but I had a huge social media following at that time, which gave me a, a, an added resource for, you know, contacting people about Plexus. So, uh the first thing I would say is unless you're super ambitious and super motivated and know a ton of people, you're just never going to make money with Plexus, okay? It's just, it's a multi-level marketing scheme. Um, I did make money with it, but I was in a unique position. But even with me, it started falling off because the whole thing starts collapsing because it's not a miracle. It does take work and it's hugely expensive. So anyway, we'll talk a little bit more of that in a second. Nevertheless, uh, the final thing I'll say about Plexus in terms of the success I had early was it gave me so much uh, motivation. It gave me so much clarity about what I wanted to do in my life and how I absolutely loved moving forward with weight loss. Um, and I noticed it, you know, it didn't seem to be as easy as it was. Like maybe it wasn't even work. I just wasn't sure. So I started really researching ways of eating and diets and how to do it right. And I started you know, changing the way I eat. So, you know, I was eating healthier foods, I was eating more vegetables, and then I got to where I didn't take the plexus. Now, I still sold it, but I just got where I didn't take plexus. And that went on for months, And um, but I was still selling it. There was so, I had so many people that were taking it, quote-unquote, under me in my downline, you know, that I was still an ambassador, and I still got the minimal monthly ship, shipment, but I would give it away or whatever because I just didn't take it anymore and I got to where I was telling me look I don't take it anymore it, I, I did lose a bunch of weight when I started but I just don't take it anymore nevertheless I started eating right and I uh, started moving more towards a, a vegetarian type diet more towards a vegan diet and I started really having success with that and um, eventually ran into issues with Plexus and 
I told him I didn't want to be an ambassador anymore and all this stuff happened or whatever. But I continued my research, you know, which led me to, uh, I even went raw food vegan for a while, then mostly raw, then whole food vegan. Uh, this whole series of events happened that led me to a ketogenic diet, and I'm coming up on a year on a ketogenic diet, which has been by far the best thing I've ever done. Like, I will always be a ketogenic eater. This is the way to go. Make no mistake about it. If you're an overweight, obese person, a ketogenic diet is hands down the way to go. In my opinion, from everything I've done, obviously I've had some success and continue to have success. Lost over 120 pounds, and uh, you know, I feel better than I've felt in decades, and and I have no doubt that I'll always be able to continue this this trend, okay? Because it's just it's just the way it works. It's just amazing. But anyway, so I've spent before I did this podcast, I spent a lot of time going back over my plexus days because I want to give an honest assessment of plexus, and you know, and I don't, and I'm not, ba- I don't want to bash plexus. I don't want to bash the company or the people who take it or your friends who may be trying to get you to take it or any of this stuff. I just want to be honest, okay? So I really happened to think about this because I remembered when I would speak to other people, I would share with them what I was doing. And I was telling everybody who would talk to me now, if you just bought Plexus and you didn't ask me questions or whatever, you know, I would send you a message generally and say, hey, I'm glad to have you on Plexus. If you have questions, let me know, or whatever. Many people would never contact you, but a bunch did. And I remember telling them everything I did. And a big part of that always started out with, I downloaded the MyFitnessPal app, and I'm tracking my calories now. And you need to put your weight in there, and your height, and your age, and tell it you want to lose one pound a week. And whatever amount of calories it tells you to eat, you need to stick to those calories, and Plexus will help you. And so... In my honest assessment, looking back, you know, I saw people that lost five or 10 pounds with Plexus. I honestly didn't see a ton of people that lost 40 or 45 pounds or whatever, like I did. And I think I was so successful because I was very proactive in my weight loss. I wasn't just taking Plexus. I took it, but I also was actively engaged in reducing the amount of calories that I ate. I'll give you another example of that. Uh, I would still eat McDonald's, but I would go to McDonald's and always uh, kept in my car a, uh, you know, plastic knife, fork, spoon, all that kind of stuff in my car, utensils, always had those in there uh, because I did a lot of eating out. My whole entire life used to be eating out, as a matter of fact. But I'd get a double quarter pounder with cheese and I'd get the small fry and um, I'd get a Diet Coke instead of getting a regular Coke or... Actually, and I could go back and pull up my 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 my, my fitness pal logs from that time and look at them. It's funny. I'd get the regular Coke because regular Coke tastes best. Uh, but I would my goal would be to only like drink twenty percent of it. So I would sip it at just the right times to get that flavor, and, and I would throw eighty percent of it away. So that was my thing. I'd take that knife and I'd cut twenty five or thirty percent of the double quarter pounder cheese out, a big triangle wedge. I'd cut it out like a quarter of the burger, and I would immediately throw it in the in the McDonald's bag or whatever, or throw it in the garbage if I was inside. And I'd take those fries, and I'd throw half those fries away. And so I was eating, you know, I was still eating the crap, but I was doing all of it. Like, Plexus wasn't doing that stuff. I was doing that stuff. And I applied that to everything I did, and I was restricting my calories across the board, and I was very self-conscious about what I ate. Now... I felt like at that time, Plexus, that I could not have done that without Plexus, that Plexus was controlling my hunger. It was controlling cravings. Um, As I honestly look back and evaluate it, I don't know how much Plexus did in that regard and how much of it was a placebo effect. That I, I was using it as my motivation, as my strength, as my rock to do things that I should have just been doing. Now, I'm not completely discounting Plexus because, honestly, I, I know that when they developed, originally developed Plexus, and this is I don't think this is the same formula they have now because I know they've changed the formula a couple of times, actually, several times. That's my understanding. I know they did when I was still with them. They changed it, and I've heard they've changed it since. But I know the original formula was something they were developing to help treat you know diabetic patients to keep their blood sugar down, and they noticed that weight loss was happening as a side effect. Well... Given what I know now from a ketogenic diet, if this actually did affect blood sugar, which 
by via insulin, if it had that effect, then it could have contributed to weight loss. <clears throat> now, whether it did or not, I don't know. I'm just saying it's feasible. But to, because what I've learned that's caused me to you know have so much success on a ketogenic diet and love a ketogenic diet, and there's many reasons to love it, and we'll talk about those because I'm comparing, uh, you know, plexus to keto. So we'll talk a little bit about ketos, and we'll cover that in a second. But if, in fact, it really did affect insulin, and I don't know that it did, but I know they claimed they were developing it for diabetes patients and noticed weight loss as a side effect. If it indeed did that, then that would be a pathway to assist with weight loss. So it's possible, but I don't know. Because again, I think back to all the work that I did to lose the weight. And I was losing a lot of weight. <clears throat> and I was having success and I was happy. But I, when I think about how much of it was me making decisions on what to eat, that's basically the, my entire every day was me making decisions. I was religious about tracking in my fitness pal. I was religious about figuring out ways to cut corners and still eat food I liked but not eat too much of it. And um, I feel reasonably certain I would have had nearly identical success without Plexus if I had just done all those things. So did Plexus chemically assist me with that? Or did Plexus assist me merely as a placebo effect? Or was it some, maybe some slight combination of it had some slight effects that helped me combined with all the work I did. And honestly, I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. I suspect it was largely placebo. I suspect largely that Plexus didn't chemically do really much of anything for me. It was just a mental thing. It had a placebo effect. And it may have had some slight effect on me. <clears throat> One other thing about Plexus is the one thing they really push is with women that they have these other products. It's not just Plexus. They want you to buy their whole gamut of exp overly priced products. <laughs> uh, I remember the probiotics. See, I take probiotics now. I take them every day. And I pay like a fifth or a fourth or a sixth or an eighth of, of the probiotics they sell. Maybe even less. Maybe a tenth. I don't know. It's not anywhere near what they charge for their probiotics. And mine are very high quality and work very well. Matter of fact, my the things I take now are way better. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> anyway, the other thing that they would push is Picos. Women, you got this Picos. Or you have this yeast overgrowth. You know, so you need to take this thing we have. And, you have, and then we have this product. Blah, 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 blah. Especially for this yeast overgrowth thing and this Picos. <clears throat> Did it help or not help? I, I'm, I don't know because I wasn't a woman with Picos. And I didn't have yeast overgrowth. I do know this, interestingly enough, a ketogenic diet is amazing for Picos. Uh, women with Picos report phenomenal results of switching to a ketogenic diet. And for yeast overgrowth as well. You're removing the sugar. You're removing the food that all the stuff that's eating that's causing the yeast overgrowth. <clears throat> on a ketogenic diet. So when I compare the two, I would say by far, a ketogenic diet is going to work better for both of those uh, based on some research I've read and then people I've talked to and what I know in general. Again, that's not a medical opinion. That's just my opinion. As a guy who's done a lot of studying. <clears throat> so let's talk about the ketogenic diet and, and then we'll do a final wrap-up. So a ketogenic diet, again... You know, I had to make the effort to decide what to eat. I decide what I will and won't eat. It's not what I can or can't eat. And I have another podcast about that that I highly encourage you to go back and listen to. And again, if you use the Spreaker app, you know, when you find the Fat Guy Podcast page, you can just scroll down and see every episode I've ever recorded. It makes it really convenient. So, uh, it's, it's not about what I can or can't eat. It's what I will or won't eat now. Just like when I was taking the Plexus, I was very conscious about how much of a burger I ate or what I ate or how much I ate. You know, I was making all those decisions. I, I had to make decisions on a ketogenic diet. So in that regard, it wasn't any different. Um, I just wasn't taking any pill, you know. Um, I remember on the Plexus, 
you know, I'd lost some weight, but then things got worse and it got work less and less and it was harder and harder to lose weight. And I had to make more and more decisions on my own. And, you know, and then I got into changing my diet and then I, you know, went vegetarian, then uh, you know, vegan, uh, raw vegan, whole food vegan. And, you know, I kept adapting and making changes because I kept having to do all that stuff, you know, until Plexus was out of the picture. And I'd say a ketogenic diet works the opposite. The longer I'm on it, the easier it gets. The longer I'm on it, um, the less work it is because it's just how I eat now. I just eat this way. And uh, the ketogenic diet is uh, works on you with the level of fat that you eat in such a way that you're always satiated and you're very rarely hungry. So hunger isn't an issue. And then this is a claim that Plexus makes, that you won't have cravings. And I'll admit I didn't have that many cravings on Plexus, okay? Was that Plexus or was it placebo? I don't know. I'm willing to get them to the benefit of the doubt for half of it or maybe all of it. I don't know. But I know for 100% certainty, because I've studied the why behind it on a ketogenic diet, that 100% a ketogenic diet makes the cravings go away. You don't have the sugar cravings anymore. That doesn't mean you don't want, want something sweet occasionally that you won't ever think about it. I'm just saying the cravings go away. Your life is no longer controlled by ice cream or cheesecake or granny's 18-layer chocolate cake or anything like that. You're just not controlled by that anymore. And having done both, I'll say this is not even close. Ketogenic diet wins. In terms of speed of weight loss, not even close. Ketogenic diet wins. In terms of what I think will sustain me long term, it's not even close. A ketogenic diet wins. And a big one, <laughs> when you consider money, it's not even close. Ketogenic diet, I actually spend less money because I eat way less food. I'm eating one time a day now. I eat one meal a day. And I'm doing a lot of intermittent fasting, which I can do because I'm just not hungry. I easily go 24 hours without food. I'm never hungry. It's not a problem. And I've started extending that to 36 hours or even 48 hours. And I have gone five and six days here in the past couple of months. It just was no problem. Just go, just do a, a nice, healthy fast with no problem. Because hunger is not an issue. It's amazing what a ketogenic diet does. Now, that would have never worked with Plexus. But it's so much cheaper. It's, not only am I not spending all that money on Plexus, I'm spending less money on food. Uh, let's talk about the price briefly now. So Plexus is a multi-level marketing scheme. Or I think they call it direct marketing. Whatever. I don't want to get off in the minutia of the definitions. But how does that work? I think about it. Now, how do you have a company that makes you know hundreds of millions of dollars and then also pay out all this money to the people, you know, that are selling it. You have to charge twice. <laughs> you know, you got to charge twice what it's worth at least, if not more. Because those incentives they have for their ambassadors, and I assume they still call them ambassadors. Those incentives don't just pop up out of out of thin air. <laughs> they're able to do that because all the money they're bringing in. And they're bringing in way more money than if you just sold that in a store somewhere. Because the company's got to make money, you know, and then all the ambassadors have to make money and then they have to have all this money for bonuses and they have to have all this money like they had this car thing where you hit a level, you get a free car. I mean, all that stuff doesn't come because they're giving you a good price on their product. All of that comes as a result of them charging you like 10 times what the product should be worth. If it's worth anything at all, and I, I I won't say if it is or it isn't. I'm just trying to be honest about my experience with it. I will say for things like their probiotics, look, you just go get you a. There's you want if you want to know what a good probiotic is, tell me. I'll send you a link to what I take, and it won't cost you nearly what that that probiotic cost. And people are like, yeah, but yours didn't. That there, this there's this the highest quality. Whatever. I take fifty billion, hundred billion probiotics, and I know that they're active. I crack the pill open, I can put it in some milk or some cream, and it'll clabber up, and you'll see the uh, enzyme probiotic action happen, so you know that they're, it's live cultures. I mean, no, the probiotic I take is fine. <laughs> it's super cheap, okay? Uh, as far as some of their other products, you know, do you even need the other stuff? Probably not. Um, but if you did de need it, could you find something cheaper? Sure. And let's talk about Plexus itself. It's it's primarily, unless they've greatly changed everything about it, it primarily works off uh, Garcinia Cambrosia, which you can buy just as a supplement by itself, way cheaper than you can buy Plexus. Again, I'm not bashing Plexus. I'm not bashing your friends that are trying to sell you Plexus. I did that. I did all of it and believed it. Okay? 
I'm just telling you what a person who's traveled down some roads knows, looking back and reevaluating. So, it's possible you could take Plexus for free, but you got to wrangle some friends in. <laughs> you guys wrangle some friends in and get them taking Plexus and buying from you. Uh, it's possible you could make a few hundred dollars a month, but you got to get a lot of friends involved. It's possible you could make a lot of money a month. And I did for several months. Again, I have I had such a huge... I don't want to use the term fans, but I guess when you're in radio, people who follow you are considered fans. I never liked that term. These, these are just friends I've met. Nevertheless, please understand, it's, it, I, it, that, that, I don't like that term at all. But I had so many people... I, I, I don't remember what it was. Ten, you know, Across all my social media, I had like 10,000 people follow me. And I'd post, and at that time, Facebook would show what you post to everybody. They don't do that anymore. So everybody saw it. And people, and I, you know, it wasn't me trying to sell anything. I'd be just like, wow, I lost 10 pounds. Wow, I lost 15 pounds. You know, and I would just talk about it because I was excited about it. And people asked me, and next thing you know, I'm a Plexus seller. And so, I, look, there were so many people saw my story and wanted to try it. I really did make a lot of money for several months. So... I'm not saying you can't, but I can say it starts collapsing. And I know how big my download line was and it collapsed, okay? So if you're just a regular person that you're you're struggling to get five or six people, that downline is collapsing, okay? People aren't going to keep taking it. It's too expensive. I think you begin to find out that it works marginally. And this is all in my opinion, okay? I don't want to get sued by Plexus. I'm just giving my opinions from my personal experience. So, look, you want to ask me what to do today? I want to tell you to adopt a ketogenic diet. I want to tell you to stop eating carbs and sugar. I want to tell you to make your carbs 20 grams or less a day. And I want to tell you to eat somewhere between, you know, 65, 70, and 100 to 110 grams of protein a day. And then I want you to match that in grams of fat or make your fat slightly higher. Okay, that's what I want to tell you to do. You can get off into the minutiae about exactly how much protein, you know, we could talk about that. You want to contact me, we'll talk about it. You want me to work with you, we can do that or whatever. But that's just, that's the simplicity of it. Look, there's an adaptation phase. The first, you know, five to seven days are generally not easy for most people. Um, you, look, you're getting over an addiction. You're addicted to sugar. Anytime you get over a sugar addiction, there's going to be some issues. But you get through it, man. I'm going to tell you, you'll feel better than you've ever felt. The farther you go, the better it gets. And that's the one thing I really love about a ketogenic diet. The more you do it, the easier it is. And it gives you so much control over your life. Now, I'm planning a trip to Biloxi for Christmas, okay? Now, the last time I went to Biloxi, I was coming off the most stressful times of my life. That was being there, taking care of my mom. As her health continually deteriorated and she fought for her life for months and months and months in my house 24-7. Followed up by us being in the hospital for over a month while she continued to die. And then her passing. And so my stress and grief levels were at all-time high. And I went to Bluxy to get away. And I basically lived off cheesecake and donuts. Okay? Now, I'm going back to Bluxy for Christmas. Will I eat a cheesecake? I probably will. Is that keto? No. Does that mean that keto doesn't work? It's exact opposite. It's that I have so much confidence in a ketogenic diet. I've been because I started in January. I'm coming up on a year. I understand it so well. It's given me such power that I know that on these rare occasions, like Thanksgiving, I had pecan pie and stuff at Thanksgiving. It didn't wreck me. I gained a few pounds, lost them right back. I get, a matter of fact, I gained five pounds over Thanksgiving. I lost it all back and then some. And I think I've lost, I think I'm like five pounds lighter than now than I was before thanks than I, before Thanksgiving came. Okay, that's the power of keto. I know that on special occasions like Christmas coming up, I'll be able to go to the casino, um, and I won't be in grief mode like I was last time. I'm just gonna eat mostly keto there. But I'm probably going to have a little bit of cheesecake for dessert or maybe bite pecan pie for dessert or something for the few days I'm there. 
And yes, it's likely I'll gain a pound or two, a few, whatever. But I know that it'll come right back off and I'll be really empowered and I'll just eat a ketogenic diet, which I love, and everything will be fine. It's so empowering. You know, my birthday's coming up. I don't know what my birthday's going to be like. I think I'll be back in Biloxi again because I, I don't know what else to do. You know, my birthday was never a big affair. It was just me at my, you know, when my grandma and father were alive, it was just me there with them. And then my dad died. It was me and my grandma and my mom. And then my grandma died. It was just me and my mom. That was it. And it was just small. And, you know, my mom would make me Oreo dirt cake. <laughs> that was it. This bass birthday, uh, my mom was, you know, staying with me and she wasn't well. And she uh, had a friend make me some Oreo dirt cake. Um, anyways. You know, I don't guess I'll have Oreo dirt cake this year because I don't, I don't know anyone that makes it, and uh, you know my mom is gone. But um, whatever, I'll have something. My point is, is that keto has empowered me now to where I eat keto ninety nine percent of the time. But now I know I can enjoy a birthday dessert, a Thanksgiving dessert, a Christmas dessert, and I possibly could attend another function or two throughout the year. So that, you know, whatever, six times a year, let's say, once every two months or whatever. You know, I'm not keto for a day or whatever. I I go have some cake or, you know, whatever. I'm going to be fine. I'm just going to rip my back on. Now, I I wouldn't say it starts out that way. You got to be very, very dogmatic about it when you start. You got to be keto. You got to get fully fat adapted. You got to understand the lifestyle. You got to wait till uh, the cravings go away. You got to wait till you hit that stage where there's no more hunger. You got to wait till you hit that stage where you have all these lists of go to keto foods that you know you love so it's not something you struggle with. You just go, you know, because I'm going to tell you that first month, the first few weeks, first couple of months you go to the grocery store. You still don't know what to buy. You're still confused. You're working it out. You're figuring it out. You're figuring out what meals do I like? What things do I like to cook a lot? What things do I like uh, to cook occasionally? Uh, you know, you know what are my you know ten go to meals? Everybody, you basically all live off five to ten meals, and it'll take you a while to understand what those are for you and for keto to be a normal. But once you get through all of that, okay, and it's constantly getting easier as you go. And like regular diets, they get harder. Okay, every diet, every other diet gets harder. It just gets harder as you go. That's why people fail. About the maximum outside edge of a regular diet is six months. People usually fail before then, but especially by six months, if people do a regular old, I'm eating regular food, but just restricting calories kind of diet, they just fail. And keto works the opposite, man. It just gets easier. The farther you go, the more power you have. Like, I would have never thought a year ago that I'd go five, six, seven days without food and doing a fast. It's no problem now. Like, I have such incredible control over my relationship with food and how I feel and how my body reacts to it. It's just, I can tell you, because this, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit off topic, but I can tell you Plexus doesn't come anywhere near that. And Plexus charges you a very premium for the small, tiny benefit it offers you. Whereas for free, you can radically transform your life. So I'm not telling you not to buy Plexus. I'm not telling you if you take Plexus that you're wrong about how you feel. Um, and I'm not telling you that if somebody's pitching you Plexus that they're lying. I, I think most of those people are experiencing something and genuinely telling you the truth. Although I will say you're encouraged to tell the story, the the company line story, because you've got to make the sale. And it's a lot of money. I think my startup package with Plexus was $199. Okay, it's a lot of money, and they're like, "Oh, it's only one hundred ninety nine dollars." And if you do this, 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 and this, you'll get it back. Well, if, 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 <laughs> sure. Anyways, it's highly overpriced. They charge you way more than the ingredients they have to to support their downline model, because so the company can get rich and they can have money to pay back to ambassadors. So it's you know. It's easily triple, probably quadruple, quintuple what the, what is what you could buy it on your own. You want to try Garcinia Cambrosia? Just buy you some Car- Garcinia Cambrosia. Do a little research, find uh, the brand that's probably the most recommended, and try that. And save yourself some money if you want to. But I'd say better yet, let's just start studying a ketogenic diet. Let's just start eating in a way that works with our broken metabolism. Let's let's do something that's gonna fix the broken metabolism. How about that? What if we do something that fixes what's broken? 
What if we're doing something that uh, hijacks what's broken? You know, bypasses it. You know? So, thanks for listening. Fat Guy Podcast on Snapchat. Fat Guy Podcast on Facebook. Fat Guy Podcast on Insta. Fat Guy Podcast on Twitter. And, of course, the podcast is Fat Guy Podcast. Download that Spreaker app, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. It's free. Search for Fat Guy Podcast. Follow and favorite it. And um, you'll never miss an episode. If you're already, uh, you know, use a podcasting app, you already use it, that's fine. We're in, we're in iTunes Podcast. Just search for Fat Guy Podcast. Uh, if I can help you lose weight, contact me. Um, I, I believe I have one coaching slot available for January. Um, that being said, I don't coach that many people, just a couple. Basically, the people I help, I help for free. I've helped so many people for free. They just listen to this podcast. They watch my videos on Facebook. They read the articles I post, and they just you know, dive in themselves. But there's a lot of people that need help, and I'm here to help you in that regard as well. Thank you so much for listening. Have a fantastic day.